Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today, I am finally at the end of the British battleship line after the 6.1 update buffs that the line has received. And this is the Conqueror. And as you might have seen in the, in the intro, uh, no. <laughs> All right, that's it for today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. You still here? Yeah, I was joking. Um, and the one thing, however, that I did decide was that, no, the Conqueror is still crap if you set her up like a normal battleship. <laughs> so I started trying to think a little bit outside the box. Now, the Conqueror is basically a lion with, a, with another gun turret, which uh, did not necessarily fill me with confidence in the whole affair. She, however, got a little bit of a buff. She got, uh, I think, one second shaved off the base reload. And she did get, uh, she did get better, slightly better dispersion and slightly better AA, at least on the small caliber AA. So what have I done? Well, I've decided to see if, if you throw all the money that you can possibly throw at the Conqueror, do you get a ship out that is actually decent to play, <laughs> and not something that averages out somewhere at <laughs> thirty thousand points of damage? Uh, so what have we done? Well. The, if you look at this, the skill set uh, on the Conqueror, you get a Rapid Reload, you get a Rapid Reload too. So the logical thing to do would be to build the Conqueror for Rapid Reload, right? Well, only be the problem here is that in order to actually utilize the Rapid Reload, you do need to get relatively close to things, which means you do need to play a little bit more, you know, dynamically. And the, Dynamic is not a word that I would necessarily put in the same sentence as the Conqueror, because the thing steers and maneuvers like an absolute brick. Uh, which means... <laughs> I am not playing for Rapid Reload. Now, I can hear already, I can hear the complaints in the comment section already, but um, I, I've, I've set this up slightly differently. One thing that the Conqueror gets is, because it's a tier 10, she does get a unique equipment. That is the improved steering system, which gives you 10% max traverse and 25% max traver uh, traverse acceleration at the cost of losing your engines more easily. Now, if we look at the modules, the uh, the the, mod the module that you would use in uh, the steering gear mod two that you would use in slot three gives you 15% traverse acceleration compared to 25 that you get out of this one. Plus, you also get the improvement of the actual traverse speed, because the traverse of the Conqueror was absolutely abysmal. So this is a very, very good module to have, and makes makes the ship somewhat less painful to actually steer. Other than that, I am using, I'm not using the main, main battery mod 2, I am actually using the uh, precision module. Because this, uh, believe it or not, is a tank build. Now, the Conqueror does not have great armor. In fact, the Conqueror has pretty terrible armor. Because <laughs> it's a British battleship, and British battleships in the game have it as their gimmick that their armor is pretty bad. Because reasons. It's, it's a gameplay mechanic, right? However, uh, we can use the historical camouflage to increase our range and dispersion. I'm using a dispersion module, and it also gives us additional hit points. The, actually, uh, where was I here? The elite bonus. Uh, gives you already a little bit of reload and a bit of traverse at the guns, which is good. But the big kicker is if you if you put your hands in your wallet <laughs> and you manage to get your hands on, say, Nelson here, which is a legendary commander, uh, there is a specific skill that he... There are actually two specific skills that he has. So first of all, he does get the, and you'll be surprised to notice that I am using both of the repair expert skills because the Conqueror gets her turret shot off left, right, and center, which is extremely annoying, even without the rapid reload module. Uh, he does have a, uh, the battle signals skill in in um, in slot three, which means uh, if as long as you have more than sixty percent of your hit points, you get a minus five percent dispersion. So now we're starting to talk here, right? We're having a 4% dispersion buff from the historical camo. We've got a 7% dispersion buff from the module. And we've got a 5% dispersion buff from Nelson, but only as long as we maintain 60% 60, 60 of our hit points. 
So the other thing that we're doing here is, uh, given that we have no armor, we're just HP tank. And this is a complete heal build. Uh, on PC, I think the British battleships have some form of improved repair party or something, but uh, we don't really get that here. So this is kind of the closest approximation I could come up with. Uh, we get the improved victorious charge. So when we kill something, we get 2.5% hit points back, which is good. We also have the survivalist plus, which means we get plus 22.5% hit points from the repair kits. Uh, we're combining that with the fully prepared, which is the repair kit cooldown, obviously. He does get an improved adrenaline rush, so if we manage to actually get ourselves relatively damaged, at least we have a bit of a faster reload. And uh, at the cost of not using extinguisher. And uh, the other things, he does get the IFHE+. Plus. Now, should you be using this? Uh, contentious topic. So, the Conqueror's guns, in line with the British guns, well, first of all, they're 419 millimeter. In line with the British battleship guns, they have pretty good high explosive and pretty average armor piercing. That said, the high explosive is not powerful enough to actually, especially if you're fighting at ranges, to actually reliably penetrate things. And the damage output from the high explosive is also, uh, well, just plain inferior to the damage output from the armor piercing. So while you could buff the high explosives, it actually makes more sense, in my opinion at least, to buff the armor piercing and switch ammunition types where appropriate. So with this setup, I'm using the high explosive against uh, more heavily armored ships like uh, the Kremlin or... Uh, or Yamato or uh, Grosser Kurfürst, like these things, where the armor piercing just doesn't get anything done. And I can still use the AP somewhat effectively against things that don't burn very well, like Montanas or Vermonts, uh, and, uh, and against uh, things that are more lightly armored, like Italian or French battleships or other British battleships. So it's kind of the switch ammo where appropriate sort of build. And uh, yes, as tempting as it is, I think the the IFHG Plus really just haven't, doesn't really have a place unless you want to exclusively fire AG, but I think you're foregoing a lot of the potential of the ship that if you're doing that. And obviously in the last slot, we do have the Horizontal Protection Expert because uh, we're not going to score a myriad of citadels and the... And the the armor, as bad as it is, can get, <laughs> use any help that it can get. So we're going to take damage and lots of damage from from guns. The the kick here is, or the the idea of this build here is to, and you really need the legendary captains for that to make that happen effectively, is to just heal it back <laughs> and simply not die. So that also means we are using the advanced repair kit, which you have to pay gold for if you don't have enough of them laying around. But that restores 16.7% of max HP. And in combo with the captain skills actually leads to us being, you know, somewhat more survivable. Not, not from the armor, but from everything else. So, uh, while we still have crap armor, we now actually have a way to just restore our hit points. And uh, even make, it, make it through the battle in one piece, <laughs> which is usually not the case otherwise. Uh, with the legendary module... Well, she does get a turn time from 15 seconds, which for tier 10 battleship is kind of okay-ish. And the max traverse speed has been improved and is now almost at 5 degrees per second, which is also sort of okay-ish. The guns reload in just over 20 seconds, but we do get a fair amount of them. And uh, yes, the, the main battery HE damage looks good on paper, but um, in practice with damage reduction and actually managing to get the penetrations, you're not really going to be doing an awful lot. However, you do have the 19% uh, uh, fire chance, so you finally caught up with tier 7 with the Nelson, <laughs> which I think also gets the 19%. Uh, the turret traverse speed is still abysmal, with under 5 degrees per second, but from the elite bonus you get it a little bit improved. The secondaries are still useless. And uh, the AA is now a bit better, especially the small caliber AA, which means you're not going to take down strikes of aircraft, but you're going to be somewhat more effective in uh, reducing the amount of planes that go back home. Of course, this doesn't. This means you can't do a concealment build, but honestly, with an 11.6 kilometer base concealment, it's really not also that great. So, uh, 
if you are if you if you are not if you are a free to play player i would really not recommend the conqueror <laughs> i know there are probably people out there who enjoy this ship and more power to you but i don't it's uh the maneuverability is very is pretty poor the armor is dreadful uh the damage output on the ap especially if you don't have the apcs is is lackluster uh, the he has a good fire chance but um then again you need 20 seconds to reload the thing you could go for the reload build but i tend to not make it long enough not make it through the battle to actually use my my reload skills so this is what i've come up with to uh, actually have a functional conqueror so let's get, see that in action our first battle in everybody's favorite map the atlantic against uh, manfred von richthofen schlieffen yamato kurfürst wooster shima and sommers sommers dangerous ship very sneaky destroyer so uh, we do have to and shima obviously as well so we do have to take care of that but uh, that's where we have got the high explosive for. The problem with the high explosive against destroyers is that it only really works at close ranges because at long ranges they're just even with everything that we've thrown into dispersion and the 6.1 uh, the 6.1 update dispersion buff, you're just really struggling to to hit them because it takes a while for the shells to get there, and um, you might get like half of them on target or so. Okay. Anyhow, uh, friendly, dis friendly Harugumo decides that he wants to die to carry airstrikes and sails. I know you're an AA destroyer, but could you not? <laughs> How about you, f you you sail around the other side, away from the carrier, and and you know go flank or something? Uh, okay, I'm still not sp I'm not air spotted for some weird obscure reason. Okay, now I'm air spotted, and yes, obviously the carrier is going after the Harugumo. Although it is a Manfred von Richthofen, so it's probably not the most dangerous, uh, the most dangerous carrier in that way. He could have just gone the other way, but anyway, there come. Uh, he hasn't lost too much, too much health. There comes a, there come the torpedo bombers. So let's see if we can dodge some of these torpedoes, and let's see how many aircraft we can shoot down with our improved uh, AA plus assistance from the carrier. Well, six aircraft. Okay, not too bad. Anyway, there is a Gosa Kurfers. So first salvo out, we're still on the HE because that's a Gosa Kurfers and our armor piercing isn't going to do anything. And there's the Somers. So there will be torpedoes in the water. Uh, we have set a fire on the GK, but you see the, uh, uh, they just don't, uh, they just don't do much damage. Now I am using the rapid reload a bit early and I only have two of them, so I have to be somewhat sparingly with them. But I'm using a bit early to try and get two salvos out before he goes behind the island and see if I can set another fire. The first one has hit, but his Damacom is probably still on cooldown. And there comes the Somers. Now, unfortunately, the Rapid Reload is going to expire before I get my um, my guns back on. Why are you smoking up? Oh, because because he's air targeted. That's why. But no one's shooting at you. And it looks like um, my second attempt at uh, setting some permafires on the GK has has failed. So let's try that again. Uh, the Somers has now... Oh, is it, oh, the Somers is trying to set, set fires on me. Okay, gotcha. So I am just going to have to avoid his torpedoes. And, uh, and see that I can maybe set some fires on the GK. Also, Kurfürst is firing at me as well, because obviously there's nothing else he can see. So shots out. And uh, as you can see, I, I was running a little low on hit points, but uh, you can, as Jingles tends to say, uh, print yourself a new ship. Yeah, there come the uh, Somers torpedoes, as predicted. So I think I might actually have outrun them. Yeah, I've got uh, I've outrun them. The Kremlin has already lost a decent amount of hit points. I'm not sure to what, probably Somers torps. Um, and the GK is still, is still shooting me. I'm spotted by the Somers, obviously, so he's still around here somewhere. Yeah, there he comes, uh, Kremlin, Somers incoming. I mean, he is one of the sneakiest destroyers, but decides to announce his presence using his guns. Uh, it's much appreciated. <laughs> but uh, Kremlin, there will be Somers to get, no, 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 don't go that way. There will be Somers torpedoes in the way. Uh, anyway, uh, there's, I mean, the Kremlin doesn't have a good choice here, really, because uh, there's also Kurfürst as well. So uh, once again, we are relatively low on hit points. Usually this is about the time that I die in a battle. <laughs> But now we can again use our high explosive against the Gosa first and see if we can set some fires. Yep, that's a triple fire and he's probably going to Damacon that. There come the Somers torpedoes, yes. That, uh, and no, he's not Damaconing that, uh, but yes, Kremlin, Somers torps, anyway. Uh, now he Damaconed, so uh, this Salvo is not going to set a fire. And once again, I have outrun the Somers torps because he keeps deciding that he doesn't want to be, uh, that he doesn't want a stealth torp. But, um, 
uh, Kosokovus is now engaging the Kremlin. So almost is coming coming in there. I'm just going to see if I can help with help out with some more fires here, and uh, do a bit more damage. Uh, that's a nice double fire on the Gosokurvus. Anyway, I'm going to need a high explosive against the Somers. So let's let's finish that that thing off. So maybe my Kremlin can survive. Shots out, and then the next salvo will be used against that Somers, who uh, the the carrier is, is keeping. Well, maybe that's why he's just using his guns because he's air spotted anyway. So Gosokurvus is is dealt with. And uh, Somers is going after the Kremlin, which is the obvious choice because it's a low health battleship. Let's see if I can at seven kilometers with all the improved dispersion that I can have because the, yeah, he's turning. Yeah, that's what you get. You see, this is what I mean, right? You're thinking like, oh, I am this dangerous against uh, destroyers. No, you're not really actually, <laughs> because if they don't sail, if they don't hold still, <laughs> I mean, if they do, yes, but if they don't hold still, then uh, it does, it does end up not being too great. And uh, But we have... Uh, I'm just going to take another torpedo here from the Somers. That's all right. Uh, we have cleaned up... Uh, the Kremlin is surviving on a sliver of, a hel of health. We have cleaned up this relatively successfully. So uh, it's just a matter of... Um, well, just either waiting for the last two minutes to, to, to get out or see if, if our team can clean things up in the meantime. Um, this this hit this uh, heal build allows you to uh, allows you to just sustain yourself through the battle sufficiently long that you can actually do some damage. Now we haven't done an awful lot of damage because we've been really a bit unlucky with the fires with the uh, with the Gosa Kufist earlier, and uh, that 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 one salvo did not make it across the island, but. Um, uh, as you can see, I'm, I've still got a decent amount of hit points. I've still even got probably enough hit points that the that the uh, improved dispersion skill from Nelson is still active. So, and I've still got one heal left. So, this this kind of allows you to to just HP tank a lot of damage throughout the battle. And can we still do something? Let's see if we can still get in range of anything. Uh, okay, Midway takes out the Shima. That just leaves one battleship that we don't actually know where it is, and the uh, the German carrier over there, who well, <laughs> yeah, who who can't do an awful lot about this anymore because his team just died on him, and whose uh, whose dive bombers are also not quite as effective against uh, against destroyers. But uh, Harugumo, you don't want to get into a gunfight with uh, with one of those things on low hit points. There. Well, he takes him out, so <laughs> I guess he was on low enough, not low enough HP that it was all good. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll cut this short towards the end because there's not an awful lot happening anymore. So this was sort of an average game. We have tanked for 45,000 points of damage, done 55, but no one's really done an awful lot of damage in this game altogether. So that last round was a bit more to show what kind of the HE can and can't do when you're dealing with heavily armored battleships. How about, however, if you uh, get into a slightly different battle? In this case, it is a 6v6 and it's also not on a terrible map. And we are up against Ohio, Vermont, double Ohio, Vermont, Alsace and double Halland. Oh, that could be interesting. So, off we go and we'll see how that turns out. I think the blue front domination is quad cup? I'm not sure. We'll have, yes, yes, it was quad cup. It's this one, yeah. It's the quad cup map. Uh, the, the benefit of this map is that I have a decent amount of islands that I can use to shield myself from torpedoes and that there are no Shimakazes in the game, <laughs> which can do enough damage with the torpedoes to make even this, uh, this thing unhappy. So uh, I am spawning with a bot Fletcher, which isn't helpful, but hopefully the Benham after taking, after taking B uh, might, be, might be willing to you know, sail out towards, towards the other side. I'll position myself already over here just to see what's coming. And I do have some island cover that I can use in an emergency when it comes to enemy destroyers. And I am, given that we have well, we have a cruiser, but it's on the other side, uh, I am probably somewhat more predestined to deal with enemy destroyers than everybody else out here. So, let's see how that turns out. Nothing spotted so far. Enemy destroyers obviously in C-Cup, doing the same move that we do. And yes, the Benham is heading over towards D, which is what I was hoping for. So I, I am in a fire support position. I don't necessarily want to rush the cup myself, <laughs> not in this thing. But uh, we've got a battle enemy battleship line. That's just a bot Yugomo. Don't care about that one. We've got an enemy battleship line over there. Getting ready to switch. There is a Vermont. So we'll we'll, we'll open up with the HE because I've already got it loaded. 
Um, and But there's also the Halland, so maybe not switch just yet. Just kind of slow down and try to dodge the Vermont shots. Of course, he takes one of my instantly takes one of my gun turrets off. Uh, this is just what happens in this ship. Um, he is not damaconing the fire, however, which is well, obviously a smart move. So let's see if we can get some more shots. Maybe we can get another fire. Uh, tri trigger a damacon. Um, no, no more fires. And Vermont's decided that he does not want to damage control. And just let the fire burn, which is the, which is the right thing to do, because it was just a single fire. And yeah, ow! There goes the first heal, but that's okay. While I normally would already be in trouble, there goes another fire. Okay, Vermont's just letting these fires burn, and that's why I've already switched to the ammo piercing, because there comes an old sus. And this is where you need to switch the ammo types. So be, I have to manually aim because uh, because of the the lock-on bugs when when there are two ships that are very close, and I think I've missed that unfortunately. Maybe a little bit too high. But I've dodged the Halland Torps and um, I might get another salvo out at the Alsace. Yep, there comes the Vermont again, doing Vermont things. And then I can switch back to the high explosive for the Halland. But first, to see if we can do something about that Frenchman over there. Hello. Uh, back to the HE to help the Benham against the Halland. Uh, Halland radars the Benham, uh, spanking the Alsace a little bit. And again, keeping the island between myself and uh, any potential torpedo threat. Uh, Benham doesn't look like he's gonna enjoy this fight too much, especially if he's deciding not to use his guns. So, um, at this range, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I can do to a Halland. Now, the Halland can't get out here because then he'd be running into Benham Torps. So he has to stay inside, which means I just can I can just go forward and not be in, not be in danger of any torpedoes. And uh, once my guns have reloaded, then, uh, yeah, Benham, I, ha I have guns and I know how to use them. Yeah, you do now as well. Okay. That's a dead Halland, and that means I am once again relatively low, running low on hit points, but uh, I have an Alsace to shoot at. I can use the rapid reload to uh, make sure that I get I get that salvo and get that thing killed before it starts fi uh, returning fire. So first salvo out, and um, I'm almost back to full hit point. Well, not quite, but almost back to full hit points. Oh, and he survives on a sliver of a health again. Uh, but I've got the rapid reload running. Uh, he's healing, but I don't. I think I can take this guy out. So that should be a dead Alsace. And the next up is the Vermont. And the Yamato takes the Alsace. Well, well. <laughs> uh, yeah, Vermont's obviously shooting at me because, well, logically he would. So that could hurt. Uh, maybe I can belt tank that if I'm lucky. Ugh, ow, ow, yeah. Uh, definitely not not having the 60% <laughs> health anymore and uh, not getting the 5% dispersion buff from that. So we do need to get ourselves a little closer. But the enemy team is down to a Holland and I presume and uh, two two battleships. So uh, it's not too terrible. And uh, we've got one more heal that we can use while unloading at that Vermont. Like I said, um, HE against uh, things like American battleships that are actually heal that are actually pretty resistant to fires. And not a, not the greatest idea. The AP is actually a is, can actually often be a better choice because, as you can see, the damage output is just there. And uh, one more heal off, and we should be back. <laughs> we should be back in action. See, normally at the Conqueror again at this point, you'd probably be dead. <laughs> the Vermont would have, would just have killed me outright. So, a couple more salvos at the Vermont, and there's an Ohio that's actually not paying attention. Well, uh, we've got them. We've got them encircled at this point, and. Uh, there's not unless unless they can pull like two or three kills back in a short short amount of time. There's not an awful lot they can do, but uh, I can get some shots off at the Ohio, who seems to be stopping actually. And uh, then I don't have heals anymore, but I think I've got my dispersion back again, <laughs> my dispersion buff, and uh, make my so I can make my way towards the uh, towards the Vermont. I don't know where the destroyer is, uh, but. Um, Honestly, it's uh, it's it's just the sweet it's just the Swedish destroyer, so the torpedo threat is not as large. And uh, yeah, there you go, there you go, five percent dispersion buff, and it starts looking real nice actually. And uh, you start racking up the AP damage, especially with the APCS that you get in these these nice full pens, and uh, it just has more damage output than that should be. Oh, yeah, there are some Holland torps, uh, probably flooding. Yeah, it's fine. Um, Vermont's dead, giving me some hit points back, and uh, sorry, not Vermont, the Ohio's dead. So now it's just the Vermont that's left, and uh, that Holland over there who just fired his torpedoes, so he's probably out by now. And then Benham can, is that the Benham? It's probably the Benham. Uh, can donk some torpedoes and get his kill. Yep, there you go. Which leaves me with the HE to deal with the Holland. So, um, 
Conqueror. If you are a free-to-play player, I personally would not recommend going for this ship. It's painful, and it's not worth the grind, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, there are better ships out there if you want something that can actually deal with destroyers. Italian battleships are still very much capable of doing that. Um, if you want HE spammers, why would you want a battleship? Get yourself a cruiser. <laughs> you can get uh, Worcesters or similar HE spammers that can 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 do this much much better. Um, if you if you are willing to open your wallet and you happen happen to have a commander a legendary commander like Nelson around. Uh, yes, you can totally make this work with with the sort of HE tank build that I'm doing here, HP tank build, and uh, switch your ammunition types, and you can have a decent battle. It's still not a great battleship, I would say, but with all the, the bells and whistles and all the money sunk into it that you possibly can, it becomes playable. Uh, I would say it's it's okay with that, and without that, it's it's just outright bad. So yeah, that's that's even even though they have buffed the ships, uh, still don't really still don't really feel the line. It's a bit better than it used to be, but um, un unless you are you're a, a big fan of just outright British battleships and these things, then uh, yeah, can't really recommend it. But do, if you do have Nelson laying around and you figure this looks like a fun build and you also have 250,000 free XP or you want to open your wallet again for the legendary module, <laughs> then by all means go for it. Uh, that's it for me today. Thanks everybody. And that has hopefully concluded <laughs> the necessity for me to review uh, the British Battleship line, unless they go and buff it again and then I'll have to do it all over. But I think the next time I'm going to pass. <laughs> so uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.